Now we're going to look at the chi-square test for independence. And what is that? It's still the basic same as chi-square test. We're comparing the distribution of counts for two or more groups on the same categorical variable. The only difference from homogeneity is basically what we think. We're testing if there's a link. So the null is that the data are independent. Uh, we have the same chi-square calculation as homogeneity, and we have the same degrees of freedom. Now, chi-square tests are common, especially in dependence, but a small p-value is not proof of causation. So if you do a failure of independence, uh, if you see a failure of independence between two categorical variables on a chi-square test, it's not as impressive as showing a strong consistent linear association or correlation between quantitative variables. That said, though, we can't really on categorical variables normally do a um, cor you know, a linear regression, so let's go ahead and do some chi-square tests. So we're going to test a random sample of eye color and handedness, left and right, to determine if these are independent. So I've got my table here for my sample, and our null is that handedness and eye color are independent. The alternate is that there's some sort of association between handedness and eye color. So I'm going to run a chi-square test for independence. My expected counts, and this is where I'm going to go into more detail than I did in my last video, is basically my category total. So say brown is 42, divided by my grand total, which is for all the parts of the sample, uh, times the sample total. So in this case, if I'm doing left brown eyes, my sample total is 19 times 42 divided by 14. So there's my 40 and 114. There's my 42, 114, there's my sample total. And I get seven. I'll do the same thing for the right. So that total is still 42 divided by 114. This time I'm multiplying by 95 and I get 35. So now my um, category total is gonna be 33 for blue eyes, seven plus 26. And for this column, I'm using the sample total of 19 and I get 5.5. For this one, I'll use 95, and I get 27.5. For green, uh, the 23 over 114 times 19 gives me 3.8. Then I go 23 over 114 times 95. That gives me 19.2. 16 divided by 114 times 19 gives me 2.7. 16 divided by 114 times 95 gives me 13.3. Well, if you look through all the expected um, counts, I've got a problem right here and right here. Both of these values are not more than uh, greater than or equal to 5. So I haven't met my counts condition. But there is a solution. I could change this so I can combine categories. I can combine green into the other category. So here's my new table. And my values for brown and blue are going to stay the same. So I just need to calculate new other values. So it's going to be 39 divided by 114 times 19, which is 6.5. So that's met now. And that will be 39 divided by 114 times 95, and that's 32.5. So we've met, um, first of all, the counts, the categories are counts. I've met the greater than or equal to 5 condition, and it was given that it was random. So now we can proceed with our calculation. All right, degrees of freedom, there are three rows, minus 1, times two columns, minus 1. So that's 2 times 1 is 2. And here's my chi-squared. It's observe minus expected squared divided by expected. So here's 7, and then 35, 5.5 and I get 0 0.708. If I do the chi-squared in, if I want to find the probability, remember we're always doing greater than, probability that chi-squared is greater than 0 0.708, well I basically do second distribution chi-squared CDF 0 0.708 to a huge number like a thousand, two degrees of freedom, and it spits back 0 0.70. You can also have it do it on your calculator. So the difference is you're going to enter, um, well, it's the same as before. You're doing a matrix, right? Oops, and here we go. And basically you go second. It's the same exact test, All right? So here's a matrix, which I've already entered the data for from my table. 
and then I'll hit stat test go down to the chi-squared test and I have my matrices specified go ahead and count I'm gonna draw this time and you can see I've got still because it's only two degrees of freedom it's got that big ramp and I got the same values but I'll go ahead and do it again and just show the calculations since there tends to be a little more precision in the calculation screen and hit calculate and you can see it matches the answers I got here when I calculated these so because we have such a high p-value 0.70 um, that's the probability of getting this sort of variation just from randomness um, we do not reject the null hypothesis there's no evidence of any association between handedness and eye color in uh, I don't know why it says in high school oh, it must have been a high school sample all right so what can go wrong don't use chi-squared methods unless you have counts so if I'm comparing weights that's okay if I categorize the weights for example um, underweight um, correct weight overweight obese that sort of thing don't assume a two-way table makes data suitable for chi-square just because you have uh, two columns doesn't mean you can run chi-square beware of large samples because what happens is after a while it gets very hard um, if you get too large a sample believe it or not you're always going to reject the null and we don't want to put ourselves in that situation and don't say that one variable depends on the other just because they're independent they're not independent association is not causing